Welcome back to the world of War Tales. Alright, so this video is going to cover professions. I have just kicked off with a new party here. Um, this video is going to cover uh, a little bit of information just on how you actually do uh, some of the profession mini games that are in the game. Um, I'm going to skip over this fight in just a, a second uh, and we'll get straight into the professions and the crafting. Alright, and boom, fight complete. Uh, didn't think you needed to watch that one. This is not a video about fighting, it is a video about professions. Okay, so from the uh, the starting location in Tiltron, um, you do have access to quite a few good little places to actually kick off with professions straight off the bat. Uh, so that's why I've just chosen to do it from here, uh, just so that, you know, I can show you a kind of a good overview and um, and we can go, uh, go at it from there. Uh, don't worry about these drunkards, they'll come up to us, but we can actually just leave them here. Uh, we don't need to do anything with these guys just yet. Alrighty, so mining. For most of the mining professions, you do actually need to visit uh, caves and things like that. Um, this is the first cave that you can do something near. I'm just going to threaten this guy because I can, and he'll let us in. And you'll find inside the cave these little things called iron ore veins on the walls. They can be a little bit hard to see, so like that one in particular is quite hidden. Um, so sometimes just mousing around, moving your camera, uh, if you just hold right click you can rotate that. Uh, and it actually shows you other little things inside caves that you can loot sometimes as well. That will be hidden when you first walk in. Um, when you mouse over them, all you have to do is right click. Now you don't need to have a miner in the party yet to, to start right clicking. You'll see the little new profession miner uh, pop up there as well. And you can just select someone. Um, it doesn't really matter who you select, though you do get a constitution bonus for doing so, so I'd normally recommend a, a character who you want on the front line as a tank just for that constitution bonus. Um, the later levels of mining also give a bit of a strength bonus too, so it's even better on someone who is both uh, a strength-based character and tanking some damage for you. So you can select as many people for miners as you want, so I could actually set the whole party to be miners if I wanted to begin like that, um, just to give them all a plus two constitution bonus as well. Anyway, uh, with the first party member selected here, you'll get this mini game pop up where these grey circles appear on the map, and then you've got another concentric circle that obviously comes in from the outside. As it moves in, if it turns green and you mouse over that, uh, that grey area and you click, you'll get the green tap, which means you've done it successfully. Now you get five of these in a row, and the grey circle will move around the screen, and you can leave it there for as long as you want. There's actually no, no rush, you don't have to click it on the first go or anything. So you can take your time and move your mouse and get used to the speed and then click. And you can still miss even when it happens. Now, depending on uh, how you go with it, you'll get a different amount of experience and resources. So if you hit um, only uh, one of the five clicks, so if I uh, hit one and then uh, let me try and miss a couple, one and two, I should only get one of the four. Uh, and so basically each hit gets you another you know, certain percentage. Ooh, I managed to get five ore still there. That's very, very strange. So I must just increase the chance of how much ore you get, because I definitely only hit one of those five. Um, there you go. I've learned something new while teaching you a mining video. Um, the, the mining is sort of probably one of the easier mini games, and it's really good to get as much as you can, um, just to, to help you craft some more things as you go. What I probably would say, these things do respawn, and there's plenty of resources around the map, so don't feel like you need to um, save before you go mining just to maximise the amount of ore you get. It's not like the demo where there's a really limited amount of resources available and it's very finite. Uh, in this version of the game, in early access, with things respawning, you actually will always have um, spare ore by the end of the game, and you'll have you know, plenty to craft all the weapons and things that you need. Okay, cool. So that is mining completed. Uh, what we'll do, we'll just duck into our camp quickly now that we have finished mining and set someone to be a tinker. And we want a tinker because we need the tinker to make us um, some lockpicks, which we will use very soon, and some fish hooks, which is what we use for some of the other professions as well. So we've now got some fish hooks and some lockpicks, and we can get on to our next uh, next profession. I'm just going to pick up Run as well. Uh, run is always the, the very first knowledge that I pick up because it just allows you to do so much more, so much more freedom. Um, let's say there's a pack of wolves, uh, you know, up here. I will just uh, duck away from them with my Run skill and we will be totally fine. 
Uh, so I know that I can get away from anything with run except a very small number of guards. Okay, so for fishing, you're looking for little stars like this on the map. So you can see one over here on the other side of the lake as well. Uh, and there's also little fishing huts in uh, different provinces as well. So when you get near one of these little stars, if you actually just click on the star, you'll get the blue circle and it'll take you into the fishing area and show you the new profession, angler. Uh, so I'll set my spearmen to be an angler because I feel like spearmen, uh, you know, they could just stab the spears in. They don't necessarily need the fishing hooks. Uh, and what you'll see, pretty similar scene most of the time. The time of day does actually change how bright these things are. So, you know, if you prefer it when it's kind of lighter, come during the day and you'll actually see a little bit more, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, I do find it weird maybe that there's shadows at 3 a.m. in the morning, but hey, you know. Okay, so for fishing, uh, basically just select the uh, the area on the, the water that you want to throw your fishing hook and left click, and you get this little bar that pops up. Now the fish is going to be pushing left with that one arrow, and whenever I click my left mouse, those two arrows appear, and I just have to try to keep the bar in the center of that, that area. Now it doesn't matter where I click on the water, the bar will actually just appear in the same spot. And uh, you can see that there's a little circle on the fish that counts down. And so it's when that circle gets to zero, that's when I need to have the, uh, the bar in that black zone. So just one more here. Fish pushes left. I left click to push the fish back right. And sort of on and off. And we catch our fish. So fishing is pretty good. Uh, it does help, uh, obviously, more in the beginning, I would say. So while your party is small, Fishing is actually a pretty good ways to sustain uh, and catch some extra fish. Um, you you definitely don't need uh, like you don't eat too many different things um, while your your party's small. I think uh, companions only take one food and ponies two. Uh, so there's a, a little bit of variation there. Uh, maybe we should have dealt with these guys. We'll just keep keep going back past them. Uh, let's see what our refugees have in their caravan as well. Oh, look, they have some fish hooks, which would have helped us as well. So you don't only get fish hooks from uh, from mining and crafting them yourself, obviously. Alrighty, and then we're just going to head down to this farmstead, and I'm pretty sure there's something in here that we can lockpick, uh, if not steal at least. No, there we go. We have a chest up the top. So to do lockpicking, what we want to do, first of all, assign ourselves a thief. So we've got another profession there, and what you've got is the lock here. Now, you might want to turn your sound up. Um, some people are quite um, a little bit more... A, a little bit better with audio than I am um, and you can actually hear some of the, the different sort of noises it makes so I'm not clicking at all here at the moment and basically what the aim is is to try to find the spot where your lockpick moves into the, the center of the, the lock as, as much as possible and you can only do that by left clicking and seeing how far it goes in. Now as I'm clicking here you can see that the lockpick is moving in a little way uh, it's not making any noise and I'm not encountering any resistance at the moment so this is actually not too bad a spot so I know that the, the area where it's going to go all the way in is actually close to this. If I move it over the other side and try tapping, it actually stops before it gets very far at all. So I know that this is not the spot. So I'll go back to here and I'll just kind of keep moving it around and seeing how far it'll go in. And it keeps going in further and further. And if it encounters any resistance, it'll stop itself. And then eventually you'll move it into that, that area. So the bars over on the left hand side of the screen will actually show you how many times you have to uh, get this done before it'll open up. So sometimes you get single bar locks, sometimes you get up to three. So we'll just do the second one here. So I'll move it in. I'm already in a pretty good spot here. And what you can do and what my normal strategy is, is just kind of move it around and sort of see whether I'm clicking. If you click too many times or click too long in one spot, it will break the lock pick. And so you can see like this spot in particular, it doesn't go very far at all. Uh, I know it was over here. I just kind of keep moving it around and eventually boom, we unlock it. So lock picking is uh, sort of one of the ones that takes maybe a little bit more time to get used to. I don't think there's anything else to pick here. Um, you, you will get more used to it over time. And again, what I'd probably say, very similar to the mining, if you waste one, two, three, honestly, even up to like four or five lock picks on a single lock, it's, it's really not the worst thing. A lot of the time, the contents of the chest will be worth more than the lockpicks that you've, you've created. Um, or even if you don't manage to open it, it's, it's also no big loss. Um, in the demo, if you failed a lockpick, the whole lock would reset each time. 
in the early access release so far from what I've seen, if you fail a lock pick halfway through or you've done, you know, two out of three and all your lock picks break, you can go away, craft some more, come back and you'll only have one out of the three still to do. Um, so it's made, you know, just that a little bit easier. The, the thief profession is definitely one of my favorites just because they can also um, steal. Stealing is a, a really good way to get some extra stuff a lot of the time. Um, we've already got a fair bit of suspicion and that's just pushed us over the top. You do want to be a little bit careful with your suspicion because when you are over that level, guardsmen will start chasing you and um, you are not really prepared to fight guardsmen uh, at the beginning of the game. Now, particularly because I'm on a main road and I can see, see a guard patrol over there, I'm actually not going to walk back up via that, uh, that main, main road. Uh, and we're just going to head into town and see if we can't craft something at the blacksmith. Um, and we can see now our actions have caught the guard's attention. We are now wanted. So when you are trying to avoid the guards as a thief, uh, if you actually stick in forests, it does reduce the guards' visibility, so they are less likely to attack you. Whereas if I'm out here on the main road and there's some guards coming down, oh, much like that, there we go, and they've seen us. And I don't know that we're going to have the stamina to evade them. Okay, good, they've turned away. Uh, the forests can really help in, uh, in getting you through. Now we'll just eat all those lovely fish that we caught. Could have eaten what I stole, I guess, then the guards might not be suspicious, but oh well. And just going to check these refugees out as well. No, you don't have anything I can use to craft at the blacksmith. And we'll go into town and, uh, and craft something quickly at the blacksmith. Alright, let's just check the market. I think we basically need to pick up a little bit of leather or cloth. Uh, and that'll allow us enough to do something over here. So at, the, at any blacksmith, and there's a, a number of forges around the place, you just select the forge, you get introduced to the profession of blacksmith much as you do the others, uh, and I'll just make my mine of a blacksmith. Now, when you do switch professions from one to the next, you lose all the experience that you gained in the previous professions. So make sure you're not switching too much, um, uh, because the, the bonuses that you get from professions are quite nice, just a nice little bonus. Alrighty, so there are some things that can be crafted that will give you um, superior quality ingredients. So any armor or shields uh, or any main hand weapons can actually get different qualities within the blacksmith. Offhand weapons cannot be uh, built at anything other than like a basic level. They can't be superior. So the crafting of these is a little bit less important in some ways than the, than the others. All right, so what we're going to do is forge this one, forge this Taj. And we want to craft that, and we'll get this little mini game where these plates appear, and you'll get these little things popping up. And basically, what you're waiting to do uh, is for them to pop up and turn that yellow, you know, see that golden crown. Basically, uh, you can again wait with this. You don't need to be clicking it as soon as it appears and pops up. If you don't hit it on the first time, that's not the end of the game. So as one of these pops up, I'll just wait for this one over here. Too early on that one. You get this kind of dull grey silvery thing. And on the others, we'll wait here again. There we go. You get this gold. Now, the difference between the, the grey and the gold is that every one of these yellow plates that you get increases the chance that you're going to get a superior quality item. So we'll try and get these two as gold as well. Oh, too slow on that one. So we've got a 50-50 chance on that. So here you can see that we have completed a superior quality item, so we got a little bit lucky, and we got a two-star Taj out of that. So the different stars uh, mean that you get some different stats. So if we look at the base one here, it's got four armor and ten guard. The one that we crafted actually has six and twelve. So the difference is, you know, a couple of armor and a few percentage on guard, and over time that can really add up to, uh, to reduce the amount of damage that your troop takes. Um, so really, that is kind of a, a summary of the, the four kind of profession minigames. There are a few other professions that you can learn in the game. Um, alchemy, cooking, um, you've got tinkering and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but all the others are very, very passive. So if we, um, no, no, we don't have to talk to him, we just have to go to our crafting table. If we make our blacksmith and alchemist here, alchemy is really just select from a list and say prepare. There's no chance to fail in alchemy at all. You'll, you'll get exactly what you asked for every time, uh, and also no you know, superior quality ingredients, that sort of thing. Um, so one, uh, yeah, I mean, that's you know an overview of all the professions. Um, one really cool thing, and this is actually one thing I really love about alchemy, 
uh, or maybe war tales in general. So at the back of the shop here, you can see this, this uh, cloth, this banner hanging. And uh, in this video, just at the end, I'm going to show a little picture of what this image looks like, kind of larger. It was shared in one of the Q&A sessions. And I really love how much detail the War Tales team have put into um, all of the little props and stuff around the place. So even though this is like a really background uh, object, the, uh, the art that they do is just really, really nice. So I'll include that. That's just a little aside that I think of every time I walk into the Alchemist store. So here it is up close. Uh, we have the War Tales banner. So the Apothecary's banner is the one on the right hand side. Uh, on the left, we actually have two more banners that feature at different uh, different parts. So the one in the bottom left actually features sort of around the border of the Apothecary's banner. Uh, the one in the top left is actually, uh, I think, an image of the ghost pack that you fight around the place and the nightmare. And given that the ghost pack are one of the things that you hunt as you as you move around the map, there has been hints that the larger apothecary uh, tapestry are some of the other things that you will have to hunt in the game. So it is exciting. I'm very keen to see what other creatures we get to face as part of this uh, the world of War Tales. All right, that's Cargo for now. Bye.